Today in this lecture we are going to focus on the effect of total peripheral resistance on long term cardiac output. We have started our new chapter about cardiac output, venous return and their regulation. So today we are going to discuss the effect of total peripheral resistance on cardiac output. Basically we have discussed this uh, topic previously as well but as we are discussing cardiac output so it's important to discuss it once again basically cardiac output is the amount of blood that the heart pumps per minute or every minute and the venous return is the amount of blood that it returns to the heart every minute but whenever the heart is pumping the blood whenever the heart is pumping the blood for example this is the heart and it is pumping the blood into these blood vessels there is some sort of resistance in these blood vessels there is some sort of resistance in these blood vessels the resistance can be shown with the help of this red color now this is resistance this is the resistance of the blood vessels if this resistance increase if the 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 blood vessels get constricted or they get tight they get tightened or due to any blockage if this peripheral resistance in the blood vessel increase or if due to any reason this resistance decrease or the blood vessels dilate there will be some effect on the cardiac output and we are going to explain that effect with the help of this graph now we see that on the y axis we have plotted the arterial pressure or the cardiac output we have the arterial pressure or the cardiac output on the y axis and we have <clears throat> plotted the total peripheral resistance total peripheral resistance on the x axis now here we have plotted the cardiac output as a percentage of the normal these are not the exact values rather these are the percentages of the uh, normal values and here again we have plotted the total peripheral resistance is a percentage of the normal these are not the exact values but the percentages of the values now we exactly know with the help of ohm's law ohm's law that cardiac output cardiac output or the amount of blood that is pumped by the heart every minute is equal to arterial pressure divided by total peripheral resistance or simply speaking the cardiac output is inversely proportional to total peripheral resistance it means if the total peripheral resistance increase the cardiac output will decrease if the total peripheral resistance decrease then the cardiac output will increase because in the ohms law the total peripheral resistance and cardiac output are inversely proportional to each other with the help of this equation we can also calculate arterial pressure and we can also calculate total peripheral resistance if two uh, two figures are known for example arterial pressure or cardiac output is known then we can calculate the total peripheral resistance and if the arterial pressure and total peripheral resistance are known then we can calculate cardiac output now if we plot the same equation here in this graph we see that as the total peripheral resistance increase as the total peripheral resistance increase the cardiac output starts decreasing this red color this red color line is basically showing the cardiac output and we have plotted the cardiac output here on the y axis at this point at this point the cardiac output is 100% of the normal or it is exactly normal so basically this is showing the percentage of normal at this point the cardiac output is exactly normal at 100% it is exactly normal at this level similarly the total peripheral resistance is normal at this level so when the arterial pressure 
when the arterial pressure and the total peripheral resistance are normal we plot the cardiac output here at this level the cardiac output is also normal but when the total peripheral resistance increases this way due to any condition for example both the arms and legs of a person are removed or limbs amputation or there is a disease known as hypothyroidism which we will discuss in endocrinology the thyroid hormone that are secreted from thyroid gland they are they are decreased due to hypothyroidism these are two examples there are other conditions as well but but in these two examples the total peripheral resistance has increased so this increase this increase has led to a decrease it has led to a decrease in the cardiac output but if the total peripheral resistance in decreases if the total peripheral resistance decreases for example a condition known as beriberi or hyperthyroidism the opposite of hypothyroidism or in anemia if the total peripheral resistance decreases then we see that the cardiac output starts increasing but it is important to discuss that this effect of total peripheral resistance on cardiac output is a long term game it is a long term game the total peripheral resistance will have to remain high or low for a very long time or in a chronic ailment only then the cardiac output will follow the total peripheral resistance in a reverse direction this graph also needs that other factors should remain the same it simply means that apart from the total peripheral resistance all the other parameters all the other parameters like for example the heart rate or the volume of blood or the thickness of the blood or any other uh, parameter all of the other factors should remain the same there should be no change only then this equation will be Uh, considered uh, only then this equation can be applied and only then this curve can follow these directions so to summarize the effect of total peripheral resistance on long term cardiac output we see that if the total peripheral resistance somehow increases if the total peripheral resistance increases the cardiac output starts decreasing the cardiac output starts decreasing and if the total peripheral resistance starts decreasing due to any condition like in very very hyperthyroidism or anemia the cardiac output starts increasing because cardiac output and total peripheral resistance are inversely proportional to each other in ohms law and ohms law basically states that cardiac output is equal to arterial pressure by total peripheral resistance the same equation was also used for calculation of the arterial pressure but this equation simply means that these values are percentages of the normal these are not the exact values and in this in in this equation and this example if the total peripheral resistance is 100% of the normal and the card and the arterial pressure or the cardiac output is 100% of the normal only then we will have a normal value anything above or anything below these levels will basically uh, bring a change in the cardiac output and this equation also needs other parameters or other factors to remain the same only then will they follow these rules or if they are not if they are not following these changes for example there is also a change in the volume of the blood or for example there is also change in the heart rate or there is some other pathologies then uh, these these rules or this ohms law will not be follow followed exactly in the same way and the curve this curve which we have drawn may be slightly changed and it will not be exactly the same 
थैंक्स अलॉट फॉर वॉचिंग द वीडियो